Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at two ideas that I have for laundry detection. So detecting when the washing machine has finished its cycle and reacting based upon that. And there are two ways we can do this. One of them involves this piezo disc and we'll look at the vibration. The other one is uh, looking at some of the status LEDs of the washing machine. But let's go one by one. First we will look at the uh, vibration and how it's done. So the device consists of an ESP32 and a piezo disc together with two 1 mega ohm resistors that are making a voltage divider between 3.3 volts and the ground and that center point is connected to pin 34 which also connects to the positive of the piezo and the negative is connected to ground. Basically this references the voltage to the halfway of 3.3 uh, and ground and when a vibration is detected that voltage will oscillate and this one is running in an Arduino code and here on screen I have it, uh, the output of the serial plotter so you can see that one of the issues that I have with this sensor is that it's quite noisy and it uh, I don't know if it's the piezo or what's causing this and this is kind of uh, temperamental so sometimes it's more noisy sometimes it's not maybe something from my surrounding from the electronics is causing some interference but if i in introduce some vibration you see that the signal changes significantly so during idle operation it kind of works in between 1850 and about 2000 maybe 2050 units of uh, of the plotter but as soon as I try to tap it, it goes down to zero in some cases and up to four and a half thousand, which is the resolution of the ESP32 ADC. So basically we can use this still to recognize when there is a vibration in the washing machine and maybe trigger a digital pin or something like that and in the ESP to uh, get recognized by the home assistant. Now, I didn't move further with this version because I wasn't sure how often and how it should handle that um, the vibration changes in uh, home assistant. And if you have any ideas of processing signals in home assistant that are changing that quickly, then be sure to leave them down in the comments. That's something I need to look up, but now Let's move to the other prototype, uh, to the other idea of tracking some of the LEDs on the machine. But before we look at the other prototype, I want to thank this video sponsor, which is PCBWay. When I'm crafting my own electronic devices, PCBWay is my go-to source for printed circuit boards. PCBWay stands out with its exceptional quality and versatility, catering to both enthusiasts and professionals. The process couldn't be simpler. I had to their intuitive website, upload my design, choose my specification and then take it from there. Thanks to cutting edge manufacturing technology and meticulous testing procedures, each PCB is nothing short of perfect. What's more, their quick production times are a real game changer when you're eager to bring your creations to life. Beyond just PCBs, PCBWay is offering additional services like PCB assembly, 3D printing, CNC machining, and sheet metal fabrication, an ideal partner for any creator. When you're out of ideas, their shared project section is an actual treasure trove to explore and get ideas and ready-made PCBs from other creators. Check out PCBWay through the link below to claim an exclusive welcoming bonus and elevate your projects even further. And here is the second device. This one is much simpler than the previous one. It still uses an ESP32. It uses a 10K resistor together with an LDR, which is light dependent resistor. Yeah, so the device will change its resistance based on the amount of light that it's uh, exposed to. And what I have here in a configuration is the LDR placed in some heat shrink tubing to try and shield it from the outside uh, light as much as possible. And on the other side, I have an LED. And if you check the video up here, you'll see that I also use this configuration to make um, like an optocoupler, DIY optocoupler. So basically, if we imagine that this is the LED of the washing machine, this would be stuck to the outside of the washing machine and extended with cable. Once that uh, LED lights up, 
we know that the machine is now finished its cycle and we can read that value through home assistant within home assistant i have this device that has an ldr sensor that reads the raw value again from the uh, input on the uh, esp32 the analog input i'm using again pin uh, 34 32 i think and when i turn it off you'll see that that value significantly reduces and if i cover the sensor that goes uh, basically to an extremely low value that we can easily identify and when it changes we can act accordingly and maybe trigger an automation that would then after a certain time send a notification that the laundry is done the code running on the esp home device on the esp32 is uh, quite simple so basically uh, we only have one sensor, which is ADC, analog to digital, on pin 32, and we are using the raw value, the attenuation of the signal, because of the configuration of the ESP32 set to 11 dB, uh, which is the maximum, so we can have values from 0 all the way to 4050. Um, we have the name, we have the update interval, this is now set to 5 seconds, but you can do it to whatever you want, because the LED will stay on until the machine is empty out then we could have intervals of like 10 or even more seconds before we get um, the notification on so that would reduce the stress on the signal we don't need any decimals because we are just using the reg uh, regular raw value and also we don't need any unit of measurements because again this is the raw value that we are getting from the analog to digital sensor and the code that runs on the other ESP32 that uh, runs the vibration sensor is really straightforward. We're just reading the analog uh, value. We're adding some dead band in between 1, 1920 and 1960 so we can stabilize the output and not output the vibration signal that often because this is the uh, what we what uh, I call the neutral and some delay so we can give some space to the controller to do its thing uh, but again as I said this is kind of noisy and not really uh, at least in my case it wasn't really usable so if you have any idea how I can improve it then be sure to leave it down in the video comments I'll have the code on of both devices up on my website so be sure to check the links in the video description for that and these are the two ways that we saw that are following kind of the DIY route, but another option would be if you get the power plug that has power metering built in, then you could plug your washing machine through it, make sure that the power plug is actually rated for it. So you can check and monitor how much energy the washing machine is using, or you can even go the DIY route using one of the current clamps like this where you can install this in the machine and have a device that would read out the value and uh, show you how much power the machine is using so you could detect when the machine cycle ends that you would see a significant drop in power and after a certain period of time with no power being drawn then you can send a notification so with that we've seen few ways how we can detect the laundry ending of the cycle uh, i hope that you liked this video and that you managed to learn anything from it if you did then be sure to let me know down in the video comments if you have any questions about any of the methods or if you have any suggestions also leave them down in the video comments make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you all in the next one cheers